So uh, our brow inner up and outer up uh, morphs are moving just fine. It um, seems like the, uh, the outer brows are moving a lot more than the inner brows. Um, our mouth open morph is also moving. Beautiful. If we go ahead and pause this and go ahead and slide through the animation, um, just trying to test. It looks like the mouth really isn't opening as much as it should. If I look at the animation here, There's not really much jaw movement, even though I was talking, there doesn't seem to have been as much jaw movement, uh, or the brachial prophase doesn't seem to have uh, necessarily captured my jaw movement as much as um, I thought it would have. The movement of the jaw is very, very, very subtle. I was expecting it to be a lot less subtle than that but um, you could easily amplify that data um, if you wanted to or change the range mapping so that you know you get more of a pronounced effect um, this espresso is very powerful it allows you to do so much um, if your data comes in like really small like that or you could always come into Brickle Pro Face and re-record and um, you know uh, do a more pronounced speech as it were, and uh, get a much more pronounced look on your data. Um, either way, we continue here. Um, lip corners down and the lip corners up is kind of weird. There's no morph per se in the DAS morphs that that does that. Well, actually, I take it back. Um, there is a corner more a mouth corner morph. It's the uh, lip stretch that doesn't really have a morph, and there are a number of uh, strategies we can use to correct that. But uh, let's take care of the mouth corners here. Ah, yes, mouth corner up and down, and navel, and mouth corner up and down strength. Um, as you can see, you'll already notice a problem with the mouth corner up and down uh, morph as it stands right now. Um, one, it's a single morph and it needs to be driven by two different properties. Um, that's one of the major problems. We can't actually have this property be on this one pose mixer tab at the same time, so we pretty much need to create another pose mixer to drive that property with the second one. And then the other issue is, well, we need a special range mapper that's going to drive this property in the negative direction in order for us to get what we're looking for. Um, so, drag out our Expresso actually and increase the size of the pose mixer tag so we can actually see what we're looking at here. Um, we'll come over to the pose morphs and we'll go to mouth corner up and down and we'll drag this off to the second screen here and um, we'll play around with that and see what we've got okay so it's going up by default at a hundred percent so from zero to a hundred percent is the uh, the mouth up property so in order to do the mouth down property which is what we want to control with the lips corners down, what we need to do is change our range mapper so that it has an output upper of negative 100%. And that pretty much takes care of our down position, which is perfect. 
Um, for our up position, we'll just uh, add a property to this second pose mixer node uh, for the mouth up and down, mouth corner up and down strength, and this one can just react just as normal. So there we go. Beautiful. Um, the lip kiss uh, will be related to the head pucker control. So we have a lips pucker here that pretty much is kind of sort of the same as a kiss. Uh, depending upon what you're trying to go for with your character, you could even use pucker wide, which would be kind of neat. We're going to use the regular pucker. It's kind of a subtle, understated pucker of lips. Um, the lip stretch. We don't actually have a morph that will stretch the lips. Um, so what we can do after we hit Control S to save our project again is we can come into our figure and um, and a little trick I found out just playing around with uh, Cinema 4D a little bit um, at least the way I have it set up right now I don't know if it's something that but um, this behavior seems to happen by default because I've just reinstalled Cinema 4D uh, from my recent fall cleaning due to significant blue screens of death going on with my Windows machine. Um, but yeah, if you have your mouse over a particular object, you know, like her like her mesh and you're over her arm or her chest area or her head or any part of her and you hit alt and left click or alt middle click or alt right click um, Cinema 4D tends to pan around that particular character's axis, around that particular character's position in the world. If I were to have this grass and alt left click it, now I'm dragging around the grass object, which in the case of this tutorial is often undesirable. I usually want to rotate and drag around her, so just keep that in mind where your mouse is when you alt left click right click um, is the object that you'll rotate around so it's kind of an interesting note alright so for the lip stretch um, what we can do is we can go to our pose morph tag and um, we can pretty much go into edit mode here and go to our default shape and we can add a pose based off of that default shape. Basically the shape that we have selected. Um, if there was a better pose, and I'm not sure if there is or isn't, but if there was, we could actually use a better pose that has a more, you know, a more stretched lip look, and we could we could use that one as our basis just by selecting it and then trading a new pose off of it. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new pose using uh, Daz's naming convention. We didn't have to, but we can go ahead that go ahead and do that. We can call it lip stretch. And uh, this time we'll just create a relative change based on um, our tool instead of creating an absolute pose. Like the ones we got from Daz are. Alright, then we can come into vertex mode here. Um, we can select our mesh. And uh, we can pretty much just stretch her lips out. Um, the best way I've found to do this is if we go into our live selection, click on it in order to open up its properties in the attributes manager. And then we can go into soft selection mode. Lovely. With soft selection mode selected, we can select certain areas of our mesh and 
effectively have a sort of sculpted kind of um, deformation driven through the soft selection. All right, so we can use our uh, our y x axis here and we can kind of from this kind of sort of frontal view kind of sort of drag out her lip that way and then um, we can come and we can select more vertices here on this side and use our y x axis to kind of sort of drag out the vertices from there as well. Um, doesn't seem to be having much of an effect. Possibly if we move to our we use our move tool, go ahead and drag, we'll get a better get a better um, better look there. Now that was kind of rough and dirty. Um, honestly a radius of probably three probably would be a much better effect. So we hit three and then hit enter here. Um, that'll give us a much more confined effect and pretty much create exactly the morph we're looking for but um the way I have it right here um, is fine for the purposes of this tutorial obviously on your characters you can get a little bit more advanced um, our pose morph tag if we go back to basic should be saving our point data and it is so it's saving any point deformations we make along with position and rotation and scale uh, parameters. So if we switch back to our model mode and switch back to tag and switch back to animate mode, we are pretty much golden here. Um, in edit mode, we're going to want to set our default value of our lip stretch pose back to 0%. If we set it back to 100%, we can kind of sort of see what it looks like activated and then what it looks like unactivated. We can kind of get a relative idea of what our morph looks like when it's a little active. All right. Cool. So with our uh, lip stretch pose morph selected, now we can come back in here and we can go ahead all the way down to the bottom. Um, it doesn't appear to actually have came in at the bottom like I thought it would have. they're still in order and uh, here we go so it's all in alphabetical order here go ahead and add our lip string or our lip stretch rather lip stretch string as it were and uh, click that to the output and now we can drive our lip stretch now we only need two more morphs we need um, our lip upper lip down uh, we'll come over here to lip in this case it'll be lip top down strength connect that to a range mapper and then connect the range mapper to the uh, lip top down strength and the upper lip up strength lip top up. And there we go guys. We've pretty much finished our Expresso. Um, we've got our range mappers mapped 